Well, well, well. Welcome back to New York Sports Wicker Media with Watsu K99. I wanted to come on for a minute and just get something off my chest. So the Mets lost a very difficult one nothing game last night to a lousy Cincinnati Reds team in uh, Southern Ohio last night. Max Scherzer made his return to the Mets. Uh, six shutout innings looked absolutely fantastic. Uh, the fastball had some decent heat on it, but the uh, the slider was had had tremendous movement on it. He was able to uh, get out of the few jams that he had. He really only had one difficult inning, but he really had a fantastic outing last night. But the Mets, uh, despite having quite a few opportunities to uh, score runs, they could not do it one single time. And at the end, Seth Lugo, who has been uh, wildly inconsistent this season, gives up the game in the ninth inning. The Mets lose one to nothing. But I'm not going to get on the Mets here. I'm going to get on my fellow Mets fans. Where is our backbone? Where is our toughness? Where is our resolve? Where is our belief? I am seeing people on Facebook and on Twitter who are calling for about a quarter of this roster to be overturned. They want a new catcher, a new third baseman, a new designated hitter. They want two new bullpen pitchers. I saw one guy even said he wants another top flight starting pitcher. Because clearly, Max Scherzer, Taiwan Walker, Chris Bassett, Carlos Carrasco, and an eventual returning Jacob deGrom are enough. Never mind David Peterson and Tyler, and eventually Tyler McGill as depth. Clearly, we need to trade assets for a starting pitcher. Can we stop? Uh, it, it is, it's absolutely ridiculous. Last year, you know, this team could not hit all season with runners in scoring position. This year, they have done that. In the last couple of weeks, it has slowed off a little bit. Previous years, this team has been an all-or-nothing offense. It's been a lot of home runs or bust. You know, look at Jeff McNeil, how in 2020 and 2021, he was swinging for the fences. His batting average plummeted. Now he's playing like the Jeff McNeil we knew from 2019, and the offense is better as a result. This team has one actual slugger on, on the team, and it's Pete Alonso. Eduardo Escobar is playing better. No doubt about it, in the last week, ideally he is not your number five hitter. You know, Mark Hanna, complete professional. Brandon Nimmo, same thing. These guys get on base. I like offenses like that because I want those offenses where you feel like this team is never out of a game. That's when baseball is at its most exciting to me. You know, when you can get on base, you know, driving the, driving shots into the gap. You know, Francisco Lindor, it, he's more, he's not really a, he's not a slugger, but he's not just like a put the ball and play guy. He's sort of like that happy medium. But let's think about where this lineup is. I mean, and of course we know the lineup changes every day. But generally, look at your top couple players. Brandon Nemo, Starling Marte, Francisco Lindor, Pete Alonso. Then give you say Eduardo Escobar, Jeff McNeil, one through six. That's I'm fine with that, and probably Mark Cannon there too. So that's like seven spots that are at the very least good. You know what you're going to get from them. The last two spots, yes, they could use an upgrade. At catcher, James McCann's a very good defensive catcher. Thomas Nito will get a hit now and then, but McCann can. He's just he's a terrible hitter. Great human being, no doubt about it. Great guy, lousy hitter. And Nito is a backup. At the end of the day, the guy is a backup. He'll get a big hit for you once in a while. He'll make a beautiful defensive play from his knees to throw a runner out at second base. He'll do it once in a great while, but he is a backup. To me, you can live with them if you upgrade at the DH. I don't need to see J.D. Davis ever again on this team. Dominic Smith, he's a role player. It is what it is. If you could trade him for a decent asset, you'd do it. To me, this team needs to get one more legitimate bat in the lineup to go in that five to six spot. Now, I don't think they're going to call up Francisco Alvarez. I've made a call for that before, but now that they've called him to Syracuse, I think he's going to get a couple of weeks there. Mark Vientos, to me, is worth a try. I would give him a few weeks as this team's everyday designated hitter. Let's see what he could do. But a new bat is absolutely going to be needed. I just don't think you need to change two or three guys out of the lineup. I think one addition, and I think you'll be in a pretty good spot. That's uh, where I am with this offense. The bullpen, <laughs> it's frustrating because, you know, the Mets really don't have many good pitching prospects. Uh, Eric Ors is a relief pitcher that I have made a case for bringing up. 
I hope he will get his opportunity up here, even if it, it is not until the Syracuse season ends. I hope that will happen. Uh, go back and check out the video that, where I posted about possible uh, relief pitchers that the Mets could bring in. When I talked about guys like Daniel Bard and David Bednar, guys like that. To me, the Mets have one great, they have a great closer in Edwin Diaz, and yes, I use the word great. They have a couple of pitchers who are very good when they're good, but when they are bad, they get shellacked. Ottavino, Lugo, uh, it, oh boy, and Jason Shreve's out now, so uh, that's that's a little bit of relief. Drew Smith is the same way. He had two absolutely fantastic months, but uh, he's really starting to give up. Uh, he's given up a lot of home runs in the last six weeks. You know, you got to be concerned about him. Unlike some people, I'm not going to say that these guys stink or they need to be DFA'd because, again, who are you bringing in to replace them to make the bullpen better? You know, I was asking last night. All right, all right. If you're if you don't want Lugo. Who are you, you know? Who are you getting instead? And they're like, oh, I want to put Diaz in in the inning. You, he's already on the roster and he's the closer. It doesn't work that way. I'm talking about changing over the roster. Oh, so to me, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, how much do you trust in Adonis Medina? They got the, the other Alvarez who they could give a shot to. I don't even think he's pitched yet uh, for the Mets. But they do need to grab somebody who can be a reliable eighth-inning pitcher. Like I said, I would also consider Tyler McGill in that role. When he comes back, I would put him in as maybe your seventh-inning or your eighth-inning uh, relief pitcher as he works his way back from injury. Once he's back, you know, and if the Mets have a full starting rotation, there's no room for him. I, so at that point, I would put McGill in the bullpen, and now you have uh, strengthened your bullpen that much more. Let's not forget at the end of the day, the New York Mets have the second best record in the National League. They're currently seven and a half games up on a playoff spot. This team is going to make the playoffs. Okay? They're going to make the playoffs. Even if they lose the division, they're still going to be playing a best of three series. And who is going to want to face the Mets in a best of three series with the Mets having that starting rotation in place? The answer is absolutely nobody. There is nobody that they can't beat in the National League anyway. Houston, they, got, they haven't proven they can beat Houston. But we'll worry about the World Series if they actually get there. As far as the National League goes, the Mets are as good as any team in this league. Do they need tweaking? Yes. But if you're a Mets fan who thinks that this team needs a complete overhaul or they need to change four or five players out on this roster, I think it's your old fear of previous collapses and an to coming back to haunt. This is a completely different team than what we've seen Buck Showalter knows what he's doing. You have a very good coaching staff led by Eric Chavez and Jeremy Hefner. You know, I still continue to believe that this is as good of a Mets team as I have seen in, I would say, at least 15 years. I, I truly believe that. I'm going to enjoy the next couple months. I will be stressed out. I will be screaming nonstop. I know I will. But you cannot get too crazy over every single day because over 162 games it's going to drive you insane it's not like football where it's just 17 games where every game feels like it's the end of the world baseball is a marathon so as the Mets had a fantastic April and May now they've had a mediocre I would say June they had a winning record in June but it was still mediocre that you know winning record by one game first half of the season is over you got to be happy where they are. Three and a half games up on first place over the hated Braves. I would have signed up for that. And without Jacob DeGrom all season, without Max Scherzer for a quarter of the season, I would take that. So now, as they head forward into this next stretch, they finish the series off against Cincinnati, then it's Miami, then it's Atlanta. This is where the team is going to show what they can do. Pete Alonso, by the way, has not had an RBI in 10 days. Time for him to get going. So, the players who are the best players on this team need to step up. A lot of this core has been here for about three to four years. At some point, they have to start winning. And they are in as good a position to do that as they have ever been. This is their opportunity. Again, the division is not the end of the world, whether they win it or whether they lose it. But they're going to make the playoffs. And that is when everything will be determined that's when we'll be writing the verdicts on these players. But don't overreact. And with 
this roster, you can't just change a whole quarter of it over. If you're going to get rid of a guy, think of a player you can realistically get who will be an improvement. And by the way, uh, anybody is not a player's name. Okay. All right. I just had to get that off my chest, just trying to uh, be the voice of reason, which for me is uh, saying a lot, because when it comes to my sports fandom, I am not known for my reason. It's usually just being completely passionate and irrational, or somewhere in the, in the middle of those two. Uh, just to let you know, I'm going to be uh, out of town for the next uh, couple of days. I'll be leaving uh, Friday, uh, heading down to South Carolina. I will be back uh, home Tuesday, so there may be some videos where I am not in the studio. But uh, you know, even if I'm not in the official wicker chair, you know that the spirit of wicker chair will always follow us. And uh, the greatness of the wicker, uh, it can never be left out of any video. The spirit of the wicker lives. I'll see you next time.